for example, when you write a song, you 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 you've listened to many styles of music, and uh, the fun of criminal also is a mix of of, of styles. Mm -hmm. um, but what comes out at first when uh, you when you write a song? For this for this yeah? particular Hugh and the New Yorkers, uh, it was a guitar that was given to me by my wife, and uh, every guitar has got stories in it, whether you know it or not. There's a piece of wood and some some metal strings on it, and you know. It, it'll tell you something if you if you really listen and you hold on to it, and you, and I think that's where these songs came from was that original uh, guitar and me just sitting down and playing it. I thought that was a really interesting way to go about doing something, especially if it was something that was outside the fun of the criminals, which I had never done before. But I did have my friends that are the New Yorkers, and Frank from the Fun of the Criminals is at one of the New Yorkers, so they were all friends of mine. I knew what their talents were, and I knew how they would play stuff. So it was. Uh, it was an element of, of me just doing what I did and letting them do what they did, and it all came together really nicely. And what style come with your first songs? Or just singer songwriter songs, and then you blend yeah, it to. Essentially, what I did was I, I wrote a couple songs on the guitar, and then uh, I, I, I started playing some shows in London at like pubs, just me and a guitar. And uh, at one point, uh, someone from a record label came down and said, Do you want to put this stuff out? And I was like, I hadn't really thought about it. And uh, then I said, you know, why not? Let's give it a shot. And the one thing that, that I didn't know at that point was that, I, well, one thing I did know is I didn't want to do the whole machine thing where you just jump on the bandwagon again and go out on tour and do that stuff because it wasn't special. I mean, everybody does that. So I wanted to do something special and I wanted to do something that really meant something that was close to my heart. And uh, uh, initially I decided that I, I didn't want to take any revenue from the record sales and I wanted to donate it to charities. So once I decided I wanted to do that, a lot of good things started happening. A lot of people started coming on board the project that uh, I would never have thought would have. You know, Danny Clinch, for instance, who's uh, the harmonica player in the Tangers Blues Band, is also one of the best photographers in the world. And uh, I called him up to play some harmonica, and he said, hey, who's doing your pictures? And I said, well, I, I haven't even got that far yet. He goes, well, I'm doing them. Come to New York, we'll do the pictures. So that happened, and uh, a lot of other people got on board. Ray Staff at Air Studios, who mastered the record for digital and vinyl. Uh, he did uh, Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin, and uh, one of my favorite albums, and also uh, one of my real favorite albums, The Clash is London Calling. So a lot of things like that, are, I think, came from the universe. You know, and I don't, don't want to get like an old hippie on you, but I think the fact that I decided that I didn't want to make money doing it, and I wanted to kind of have it be what it was in the in the nucleus of it being a, a, a project with friendship and love in mind, I think we did pretty good. You know, I, I think it came out as a record that sounds amazing, great songs on it, and the people that I play with are, are my best friends. You were saying your wife gave you your guitar? Yeah. Um, you say Not this one, this one's no, yours. No, no, that's mine. <laughs> but your guitar. Yeah. Um, the stories in each and every guitar you say. What yeah. was the first story that 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 that, that guitar gave you? Well, I, I mean, if you can, if if you if you don't mind me playing a little ditty, I picked up the guitar and I played a, a variation on a D chord, which was, and it's uh, I can't tell you what chord it is, but it's I think is a D diminished something or other. And I just started, and I started hitting that chord, and then I wrote this song called The Ripple, and it was kind of like. Uh, the, the music came, and then like it was like this kind of wave, and uh, I started writing lyrics about how every little thing we do has a consequence, and that song kind of just happened in about an hour, and uh, you know then I, then I went into my studio and I recorded it, and then I sent it off to a couple of my friends in the band, and they put their parts on it, and it came back and it sounded even better, and then I you know sent it to Tim, and Tim and I were mixing it over the internet together, and. And it sounded even better, and and it was one of those things where it was, it wasn't. I didn't intend for it to be released. I didn't intend for this record to come out, and uh, I think that is a good way to do things, because if you if you feel the pressure, or if, if you're a musician that's uh, that's trying to make music, to make money, that's one way of doing it. But I was lucky enough, being in the fun of criminals for all these years, that I was financially secure and I wanted to make music that I wanted to make yeah. and didn't really think about it as it being a released album. So the songs are actually really honest and, and come from the heart, which I think is 
it's, it's an anomaly these days. A lot of times people make music to make money. You were saying the Ripple. Uh, what's the story? What, how come this story came first? I don't know. I think it's because the chord sequence uh, had a, a, a ripple effect on what happened with the song. And that's when I started getting the lyric. And, and the lyric kind of came to me that, you know, if you do something, you cause a ripple effect that affects other people around you. And uh, that's the way the song felt in my head. So that's when the lyric came. And then when the lyric came, it was really easy for me to tell a story with it. And, you know, I've been doing this a while, so I know how to write a song. But it was one of those things where I didn't really know if it was a good song or a bad song. And, you know, I bounced it off my wife, and she said, oh, it's a pretty good song. And I played it for my manager, and she's like, it's a pretty good song. And then everybody said, that's a pretty good song. And I was like, oh, okay. And the more people that heard it, especially the guys who played on it, uh, were really into it. And they really liked the music. and. The where I was coming from with it. I think that's an important part of when you listen to music, where it's coming from. If, if it's coming because you want cash, it, you can tell that. I mean, we're smart enough nowadays to smell bullshit a mile away. So if you listen to this record, you know that's not there. There's no bullshit there. It's actually the truth of what I'm feeling. 